Alrighty, Simon, let's talk about the leg work through the golf ball. And it really is an effect of how we're using our pressure throughout the swing, the transition, what it feels like to move down towards the golf ball and explode out of it. Now, there are some commonalities with the majority of PGA pros. Now, there's always exceptions to rules, but we would generally see those players through the moment of impact have this lead side extending, wouldn't they? 100%. And that hips, the hips as a result would begin to rotate more and the chest would finish tall. But we do see a significant amount of golfers with these disco knees sliding towards the golf ball, right? Be it if the hips are moving too far forward or they're not, they're back in space, but they stay down for too long, right? That could be concept that they're trying to stay down, but in the same regard, to get the most amount of effectiveness with that compression and the whip and the distance, we need this extension of the body, don't we? So yeah. what I want you to do, mate, is we've got this stick here and we're gonna talk about a great drilling exercise that you've used and many others can to improve this area of the game. Yeah, so I think it's something that highlights quite a lot. Uh, I think you find that mid to high handicappers, they don't tend to do that. They tend to stay on the right side, whereas yeah. a lot of the, it's the good players that really shift onto that left side. Yeah. Sometimes the left side's not strong enough to hold the amount of shift that they've got. Yeah. And then they just collapse a little bit in the legs. Mm. I'm certainly guilty of that. So yeah, this drill is just something that I think worked brilliantly for me. I just basically put it down my left side yep. so that it's touching my left knee. Yep. And then all I'm thinking is when I swing, don't let my knee touch. Okay, great, jump and in it here. it just mate. extends my left side. It helps me turn better. It helps me deliver the club from the outside a little bit better as well. So if I was setting up to that, I would literally put that about there. So you would say pretty much from the, the face on view here, it's kind of <laughs> in line with your big toe if you've got yeah. it slightly flared. So you can see it's nearly touching my knee, not quite enough. Yeah. Okay. And then I'm, like I say, this gets players to obviously swing back, but then it, every player I've used with this, mm. they feel like they start turning a little bit earlier and get that coil in the body. Mm. And then it turns and then you extend that left side club delivers from the outside only just yeah and the, but again it hits a very neutral flight mate yeah fantastic and guys we just shot a video an amazing video on one of the best drills that Pete Cowan has given Simon over the years to work on his movement pattern so make sure you check that one out but back to this drill we've got that stick upside uh, resting up against the lead side there we're talking about the knee making sure it's not dragging through and moving now if players at home, they feel themselves from the face on view and they see that they're doing this, it's not a matter of just putting the stick in and just whacking ball after ball after ball after ball, is it? Like, we need to have some awareness and some intent behind every shot. What sort of practice plan would you give them with this drill that they can implement themselves? I mean, to start with, I would start low. Yeah. I would start, you know, sand wedge, pitching wedge, yeah. and just get that feeling because it's something that's going to take time because that's your natural movement yep. to try and get the lag and hit the compressed shot. Yep. So this, when I first started doing it, it doesn't feel like you've got much power. Sure. So there's no point in getting your driver out and trying it straight away because you won't feel like you've got the power. You need to load it, everything properly. Yep. So I would start with just a pitching wedge and mm -hmm. it would just literally be little three quarter shots. Right. I didn't touch it. Yep. Right. Let's but it's always that's the focus. And yeah. again, it comes down to the rule of five. Yeah. Hit five shots with this mm -hmm. and then move away yeah. and try and replicate that feeling and think, right, yeah, I felt like my left side, my lead side did extend yeah. as I was in my impact there and I felt taller. I've, got, I've got, just got a, a question and we did talk about this in the previous video, but let's say that you've got your practice station here and instead of like taking the stick out and readjusting and so on and so forth, if players have enough room, would you advise that they have one spot on the range where they're drilling their swing in and then a separate spot, which is to a different target. Um, and we're going to remove the alignment sticks for that one, guys. I think if you were just to maybe go a few meters in a different direction and aim in a different direction, but kind of create a training zone and a performance zone. 100%. I couldn't agree more. You know, there might be a couple of things you're working on. So you might have three stations where you go, right, that one's for my legs, this one's for my upper body. Yeah. Let's put them both into production with these and you'd almost go three shots, three shots, two shots. Yeah. And then do that because every time you change station, 
yeah. you're having to re-engage and you're switching on again, yeah. which is exactly what you have to do on the golf course. For sure. You know, it's not just ball after ball after ball. Yeah. It's a ball, two or three minute wait, then you hit another one. Yeah. So again, the longer you can leave between the shots as well, the better it's going to be able to translate onto the course. I think a lot of people watching this would be very surprised how few balls tour pros hit when they're being very intentional around a movement, aren't they? And how long they would actually spend in between shots. Uh, first of all, assessing what they're about to do, getting a feel, not even hitting a ball, grooving it in, then executing, but then reflecting. It yeah. might be sometimes when I've been working things in my swing, I work on my trail <laughs> arm a lot. It could be three, four minutes in between shots because I'm standing there and I'm going, okay, build awareness, build awareness. How does that feel in space? not quite right how do i then start my backswing with that feel and then by the time you go ahead and hit the shot you'll see two pros do this all the time it's almost like the ball doesn't matter you're, you're just yeah. grooving in this feel and then they'll just follow through and sometimes you see the best players in the world hit terrible shots they might shank it over the bush but they're unreactive to the outcome because they are working on the process yeah and i would even like i take my gym stuff onto the range yeah. you know especially in lovely weather like this yeah you're not cold you're not you know restricted i would take like a medicine ball and resistance bands and mm. i'm the same as you always working on that right arm mm. on top of the backswing i get a little i want it a little bit flatter so i would do some exercises with that and then come here do a drill and then yeah hit the balls and see how it's see how it's relating from the the gym exercise to the drill to then yeah the the performance shot so look guys so much you can do Sensational advice there from Simon. Look, we've got two more balls here, mate. I want you to have a couple more practice swings, just getting a feel of that lead knee, not crashing into the stick there. Then clip that one down there at about 50% speed. And then I want you to go ahead and hit that as so, a full yeah. shot, that last one. So yeah, I, I love this drill. This is a fantastic drill for me because I get to the top and then I think, right, I need to start turning now. Mm. Club comes on the outside and then it's stay high. And I just seem to hit lovely little Lovely little fades, so we'll give it a whirl. Love it, man. Better. Fantastic. Look, guys, nine times tour winner, Simon Dyson, telling us and teaching us all about how to control those legs as they're sliding through towards the target, but more importantly, how to actually translate that into your game out on course. Mate, sensational stuff, man. Cheers, mate.